Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is Fatmata here with Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art. It has been so long and I cannot tell you how happy I am to be back. I have some things to share with you, but first I think we need to clean you up a little bit. <sighs> that is much better. Well, I hope you notice a difference because my friends, I am coming to you live in person, full color, hopefully HD. Um, I'm using my brand new camera. Um, so it's been so long since my birthday back in August, but back way back when in August for my birthday, my mom had got all the family together uh, because she watches my YouTube videos. Thanks, mom. And they actually bought me the camera <laughs> that I wanted for this year. And I am just so thankful and grateful. I have not actually taken it out of the box, except for today. And what I will say is this, I've been away and I put out a message on my community tab that October is like non-existent for me in my profession. It is our peak season. I needed to be present there and then at home and then outside of that my self-care was sleep. I didn't realize how little how little sleep I give myself on a weekly basis so it was imperative that I replenished and fixed all the things that had been broken in my body with some sleep and it was great so I took a much needed break and I'm so excited to be back. I did not touch look at my sewing machine. I, I'll get into it, <laughs> but I couldn't stitch a thing. The one video you all received was for the Zadie jumpsuit. Don't you worry, we will be getting into that in just a moment. And outside of that, legitimately, all I could do was think about sewing, feel fabric, think thoughts, uh, but that's as far as I got. This entire Zadie jumpsuit didn't even take place. No sewing occurred until November. So I'm really excited to bring that to you and I'll share all about this and so much more. L let's start. Well, what I'm wearing right now is my gable top. I mentioned in my indie pattern wish list that I wanted to try out the Jennifer Lauren handmade gable top and here is my wearable toile. I have some thoughts. So here is the top. It is extremely long. I really like it, so I've already cut out another, but um, let's see. I had cut out based on the sizing. I cut a size 14 because in looking at the finished garment measurements, given that this is a knit and I should have a little bit of negative ease, Anyways, I cut out a size 14, so this is in the size 14. As you can see, I have quite a bit of space. It's like a comfortable fit, but it is what it is. I just made this tonight um, because legitimately I have so much sojo just radiating through my body and I want to sew up all the things while I have the time, energy, and ability to do so. So it is an unspeakable hour and I figured I have makeup on my face. I said girl I think today's your moment to shine so here I am. This is made out of this lovely ribbed it almost feels like it's two different fabrics but both of them I picked up at G Street Fabrics some time ago and they just were the perfect match as far as coloring is concerned but I had very little of both fabrics so I knew that I needed to hack some things together so I went ahead just to test out the fit so I already know that I'm probably going to size down for future Jennifer Lauren handmade gable tops which I've already done a sleeve is very different than <laughs> the pattern piece so I laid the sleeve pattern on top of the fabric that I had of this um, contrasting fabric and so much of it was going to go to waste if I cut out the slim sleeve and I was like mm, I kind of want to use as much of this as I can because scraps with knits 
in those really small quantities I don't know what to do with them so I ended up doing this more balloon like sleeve and just use the same um, self fabric from the bodice of the shirt here I overextended the length of that way too much did not need to make it that long but now it just makes it extra cozy anyways this is legit Mitly hot off the press unhemmed because I was trying to figure out do I leave it this way because I don't care and I'll just tuck it in or do I bring it up a little bit because even if I am tucking it in I don't want to have to fiddle with trying to find places for all that fabric to go so I haven't hemmed it yet but this is where I am I haven't even pressed the cuffs oh my gosh I'm just so excited I was like put on the camera let's talk to the people what else have I made um, this this weekend legitimate well this week like today yesterday these past two days okay I have made four things because they're knit items and I'm loving it so <laughs> the first thing it doesn't look like much but it is a little crop top if you will and I had bought this um, oh my gosh what did they call this color chestnut uh, this brown double brushed poly fabric um, from Joann's I purchased and I got it because it it's not an exact match for my skin color but would be a really nice base for me to wear under as you can see the Zadie jumpsuit is a v-neck so things like that that are v-necks for me to wear under it to have like a neutral base when I am wearing something like that so I can still be covered so I made this and I was watching Julie from the curated curvy BFFs in my mind but that's story for another day I'm gonna link her channel below I've just been binging her <laughs> videos while I haven't been on Instagram on YouTube and such so she was talking about the triple mm, I'm not gonna but it's the zigzag stitch that has the three broken lines and then the other three broken lines and then it continues on first of all because the stitches has the three broken lines are so short you know for the individual ones it sinks into the fabric so beautifully I did a tester and of course I can't find it now but if I remember I'll put a little clip of it but I saw the difference between what a regular zigzag stitch looks like versus this like triple stitch and it sinks into the fabric so beautifully because of those shorter stitches it is a game changer and still has so much of that stretch ability it's fantastic so because this is always going to be worn under something I went ahead and just folded the edge over here and did that new stitch of my dreams that I feel like I'm just going to be using on all knits. I used to just use regular zigzag stitch or the lightning bolt but this new one game changer. Then for everything else I used my serger and this pattern is a vintage pattern that I recently picked up. It is McCall's 3187 so in looking at it it seemed like it was gonna give a really nice decent fit and like be really fitted it only came in one size which is a size 12 with a bust measurement of a 34 my bust measurement is about 36 or so or 35 but I figured because it's for knits given the negative ease and such and the fact that we're working with knits it'll be fine and then I wasn't gonna be afraid of cutting into a vintage pattern Spoiler alert, it was already cut out. But since it's just one size, they couldn't have cut out the wrong size. It was great. Anyways, I used that pattern and here you have it. This was actually the second make of this fabric, which is why it's a crop top. The first one I did was testing out the pattern full fledged with its sleeve. I definitely did not make it the full length that the pattern calls for because this is another one that is like sort of like the gable this whole tunic length thing I don't understand so I made it like a reasonable just shirt length with the sleeve to test it out I also made it like three-quarter length sleeve again I could see myself wearing this under things primarily 
Um, but I also did all of that shortening so that I would have enough of the fabric to make this little crop top because I knew I wanted to make this as well. So it was nice that I was able to use all of that one yard of fabric to make both of these lovely things that hopefully will be staples in my wardrobe. Again, the double brush poly is super cuddly and soft, as you might know, and it is going to be something to keep me toasty and warm through the winter months. Now, I really love when I find a fabric or a pattern that I pick up and I utilize almost immediately. In my world, it doesn't always happen. When you are a collector of many things, my friends, sometimes it takes a while for you to get to all the things. But I had recently, in a Simplicity sale, picked up S887 for, it is this beautiful knit dress with various necklines, various lengths. It has pockets if you so choose. I did not for this one. But we will talk about it and it has just so much potential i looked at it and i said "Ooh, i think me and you could be friends and it did not disappoint i went ahead for view c the longer length with the higher neckline and i also made it long sleeve so i hacked the pattern because it does not come with long sleeves they could have easily done that for us i think but we move on so i also increase the neckband here i made a much wider neckband so that it would just sit higher on my neck in looking at this photo and when i went on instagram i definitely thought that the neckline sat a bit higher i was actually thinking that this um higher neckline was going to be more mock neck like sit a bit higher on my neck it just got to crew neck so i'm really happy that i did that and that has now put it in my mind that i need to make much wider <laughs> neck bands for this pattern if I do want it to sit sort of as like a jewel neckline or crew neck but lovely dress so flirty and fun and twirly the skirt on this is just so nice and just the right amount of fullness and it's incredible this fabric is super snuggly it is a beautiful like knit fabric that I picked up at G Street Fabrics a year and a half ago. I've had it for over a year for sure. I don't know if it's two years or more, but um, it could have been a beautiful like lounge set. I could have easily paired this and made like a really nice, um, I don't know, sweater and comfy joggers. But when I saw this pattern and I see the color, this beautiful teal color that could be such a beautiful base for so many things, I wanted to be snuggled up in this at work. And so I went with Simplicity S8874. Honestly, if you don't mind hacking a pattern to put on some long sleeves and you want like a nice swing um, skirt, for a knit dress this um, fall and winter. I highly recommend it. It was glorious. I initially cut out a size 12, but honestly, as I was sewing, was taking it in a bit here and a bit there. So, I don't know. Finished garment measurements at the bust for a size 12 was a 34 and a half inch. Um, but because they have 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on this pattern, that might have been a part of the reason why I felt like I was shaving off more. But yeah, I definitely ended up taking things in a bit here and there. What you might not notice from the outside of the pattern is that there is an elastic casing on the inside. Sneaky, sneaky. Um, because there is no like top stitching of it, they just sort of embed the casing on the inside, which actually is really smart because when you have a fuller skirt such as this one in a knit fabric that can sort of create some weight <laughs> that would just weigh it down so the fact that you have this casing on the inside to hold some elastic in there and it's not pretty I also made this tonight so I think I'm going to surge that final edge possibly just to make it neat but any hoosers that's how it looks so the elastic just sits in there and then you're meant to sort of like flip that section up like that 
but you don't top stitch it so it's just supposed to like hold itself up like that it's a genius idea um so love this pattern so much this was also a wearable toile and um i'm just so happy i love that pattern so much i have already cut it out out of this glorious fabric i'm not gonna open it up too too much but i can't wait to make that okay the way that this all started, I made the Zadie jumpsuit because I was a part of the So Romp Jump Play 22 challenge hosted by V from 85th and Wade. So that would have been my last video that you saw were my plans for that. And you all helped me out so much with your votes on which fabric I should use. So we'll get into that in just a moment. But because I had brown serger thread, that is why I went and dug out in my stash that brown fabric from Joann's so that I could use the brown serger fabric before I switched it. After that, I put in the green and that's when I made this top as well as this here dress. I mean, it kind of, it works. It works enough, right? And now I have switched over my serger fabric to black so that I can make my second gable top as well as finish out my next S8874 dress out of this fabric. So yes, I definitely organize my patterns based on what serger thread I have. And then we move on. All right, so now let's move on. You're here to know about the Zadie. I know you are, so let's talk about it. <laughs> the votes were, I mean, they weren't unanimous, but you all let me know that you were really digging this yellow, the sort of like mustard and brown Ankara print fabric that is phenomenal. It would have been beautiful in whatever I made it into, but we chose this. Let's talk about the Zadie jumpsuit. It is a loose fitting cross front jumpsuit. No closures except for this beautiful wrap closure right here and the ties, but no like fastenings like a zipper or hook and eye, nothing. It's kind of like magic. You make your own bias binding. It's, I mean, just so many things. Now, I've heard about the Zadie jumpsuit for so long. And it was also one of the patterns on my indie pattern wish list. I was able to get the Zadie jumpsuit and was just so excited to give it a try. Ended up cutting a size 10 and grading out to a size 14 at the hip. Now that was based on the finished garment measurements. Even still, my friends, this thing was oversized. Now, some of the thoughts I had to be very honest with myself, the fact that I use Ankara fabric, which is a bit more stable than maybe like a drapey lias, um, like a drapey rayon or yeah, like a drapey rayon or wash linen or something like that. So I understand that the way that the reason I have certain amounts of structure, particularly in the pant leg is because of the fabric choice. So if I would have done this in like a viscose, probably would have given me all of the flowy like walking down the beach vibes this has a bit more structure I don't mind it but it was something that I guess I wasn't expecting it to be so obvious now I also in reading the instructions noticed that they want you to use a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance what I'm used to using five eighths of an inch seam allowance and not just because that's what I'm used to, but I also think having that amount of seam allowance would then enable me to make any adjustments, fit adjustments and things like that. Like it gives me enough space <laughs> in the, in the fabric, enough additional fabric in the seams to let it out if I need to. So, um, I really enjoyed making this. One of the things that I talked to you all about was how I was going to use this print strategically. So I have the border here in the sleeve um, and then I use the border here in the bodice and you can tell that it's the border print because it has that brown crackle right here and it's predominantly brown and then you get into the yellow and then I made sure that the border again was there at the bottom of the pant leg. I was really proud of a lot of the pattern matching that took 
place throughout even there in the back so I'm really really proud with how that pattern matching turned out not as much on the side of the pant leg but we're not going to talk about that um, with Ankara print sometimes I find that even though an image looks like it is exactly symmetrical it might not be all the way so so um, I did my best with trying to pattern match and keep things on grain but I'm really proud of this jumpsuit my husband saw me trying it on after having not sewn for like over a month when I was trying it on the room he's like oh that looks nice and he remembered that he got me this fabric which you'd be surprised but I was I was impressed and also um, but then as he was like walking away he's like so the pant legs are gonna stay like that like wide like that and I was like you were so close to giving a compliment just quit while you're ahead just let me have this moment please so anyways um yes it is a winner I wore it earlier today I've been wearing it on zoom calls <laughs> I think I'm gonna have it out for its official like debut at work um next week but really really excited about this the Zadie jumpsuit has um and I don't know if how much you can see in my busy fabric but um, the Zadie jumpsuit has tucks like pleats in the back and I am so much um, I'm so used to having darts in the back for shaping instead of pleats because what pleats would then do is it can open and gape out which it does for me especially in the bum and I don't like that look so had I had the mine again I would replace that with darts which I would probably do in my future makes so I use my bias binding maker kit and I use the 18 millimeter size and that gave me the perfect width of bias binding for this particular make I'm currently using my Singer, like my old faithful, because my Burnett machine is, is needing to be mended. We'll talk about that in a second. But I remember that I had bought myself so many little feet for my Singer sewing machine. One of which is a bias tape attachment foot. Look at that. So you feed the bias binding through here as it goes under the presser foot and then you use this gauge to tell it where to sit, like what depth to hold this thing in place. It was so easy. I just I sewed it up in one go. Listen, after having to fiddle and do all the fitting adjustments that took longer than it needed to, I wanted to save myself just a little where I could without compromising the outcome and that was just glorious so use your feet if you have them um, I'm not gonna tell you go out and buy a bias binding foot because I don't know how much bias binding you're doing but it saved me a lot of time and I'm so grateful so there it is here's my Zadie jumpsuit and again um, go on over and look up the hashtag so romp jump play 22 again that challenge was hosted last month in October by V from 85th and Wade in honor of National Jumpsuit and National Overalls Day which was October 26th so thank you so much again for allowing me to be a part of that sorry I could not get my made up before the 31st but I am here now the reason why I'm using my Singer sewing machine is because I think I nicked the bobbin case on my burnet and that was unfortunate and I am a tinkerer I have a whole video where I prepared my singer on my own that's why I love mechanical machines because I am not afraid to get up in there and try my best um, following YouTube videos of course but for the computerized for the big old computerized things I said you know what I'm not gonna do is break this investment so I kindly took it in to my Bernina dealership. I have a Bernina dealership, y'all. It is too much. <laughs> no, but I took it where I actually picked up. It's G Street Fabric. That's where my Bernina dealership is. And actually, it was due for its first year checkup 
anyways it legitimately is like taking care of a child so um, it was due for that anyways because I bought my machine back in November around the Black Friday sales uh, last year so it was due time anyways so I took it in and of course since I was there I said you know what I'm, I'm just gonna go upstairs really quickly and see if by chance there's anything here <laughs> you know like maybe if anything catches my eye and some things did and some things came home with me so here they are it doesn't look like much to you I know but look this is what the tag said I think the word on there says cashmere does that say cashmere to y'all that that says cashmere anyway I couldn't really understand the rest of it it was a lot of grams but I saw two by two rib in pure cashmere and I said I'm sold I am very happy to bring this home so um, it's like a oatmeal color it has the two-way stretch that they were talking about in this direction not really much happening um, lengthwise there but beautiful ribbed detail and I mean if it's cashmere like they say I'm be real happy but either way it's a great neutral and basic I got it in the dead stock section so two dollars and ninety seven cents a yard about two yards of it really happy about that I want to make a long line something I don't know yet but we shall see then as I was rummaging in that same dead stock section leather I saw this faux leather and on the back of it it is actually like just like a like a cotton knit that's what it that's what it looks like like you can't you don't understand do you see that anyways it's fantastic it has this much this much give that much stretch and um what what do I want to make out of this I don't have a lot it's like less than two yards probably under a yard really if yeah because it has like a jagged edge so it's not all the way that wide so maybe a yard and I want to make a blouse out of this because it's not enough to make like leggings or anything or like pants out of this could I could I make some jeans yeah. I mean they'd be short but no I don't know I'm, I'm I was thinking a really fierce like structured top out of leather because I, I feel like that would be a bit more unexpected than pants and I don't I honestly don't know that I can squeeze pants out of this so I don't want to risk it and then start cutting it I don't know but faux leather and I think it's a really good quality I wish there was more I, I hunted when I found this one I hunted and you know I get my workout in when I go um, but I could not. Alas, this was all that was there. But it's okay though. That means that was all I needed. Then I had to return because I received a call from my Burnett doctor um, who said that I actually had not switched the throat plate on my machine and I still had the single, like, um, the straight stitch plate on there, throat plate. So he needed me to come in and bring my usual like the nine millimeter wide throat plate the usual one that allows for zigzagging and all the things so he could test out the machine so I had to go back to G Street Fabric and silly me I said well I might as well um, <clears throat> go back upstairs and just see what what might be in store. I didn't leave empty-handed yet again I remember seeing this the initial time I went this uh, fabric and I didn't get it the first time I saw many cuts of it and I didn't get it but when I saw it this time I was like I can't resist it there's something about it that was calling to me so I answered and it came home 
Again, this feels like a rayon knit of some sort, and it's just like all the drape, all the flow. I already have this cut out. I'm making another S8874 out of it, so hopefully that will be on my body soon because I can't wait to wear it. And then I found this, which really feels like a cotton voile of some sort. It's like a little bit light. I just loved how vibrant this like Kelly green was on this black background with this geometric like print. You know, it was in three separate cuts of one yard each. So I don't know why somebody cut it up, but because it's already cut into like, do you, do you, do you hear what I'm saying? It's like cut already into by the yard. <laughs> So I picked up all three of them that I found in that section. So I have three yards here and I feel like a really nice autumnal shirt dress with tears because it's already cut into rectangles. I want to make sure I eke out all the fabric out of this. So I figure one of the yards can be a bodice structure and then the other two yards can be just cut up into rectangles and make a nice skirt for some sort of dress wear it with boots i love this pop of green then i saw this double brushed polyester like fabric it just says good vibes and has all of these lovely things i thought of my daughter i thought of a mommy and me i have enough here that i think i could get like a full something for me out of this and something for her which could be really nice um so yes, and it's just super soft and cozy. So I wanted to have it and it's opaque with a white background. That's hard to find. So I wanted to have this. Then I found this. You won't be able to appreciate it from where you're seated, but I know you believe me. Do you see how it's sort of translucent? I, You could call it sheer, but would you? It's like... If you are a paper crafter, I'm talking to you right now. It's like vellum for fabric. If you know, you know, like if you've ever felt vellum, then you understand what I'm saying. Like if you ever had a card that had that like smoky, it's like a smoked glass, but in paper form, and this is that, but in fabric form, because it's like, it's not sheer in the way that chiffon is sheer but it it lets the light in you can see through it but it also feels like against the body it wouldn't be you know what I mean anyway I plan to use this in like lining sleeves because I have this beautiful velvet lace fabric that I know I want to utilize in a sleeve but I don't want you to be able to see my arm through the lace however with this under it it's just perfect and I think there was three yards of it or so and I brought this home and it's just glorious and it would make a beautiful slip as well it's just great so that's what I got on this trip Four things. I feel like I've gotten definitely more responsible with my purchases. There were many things that I could have gotten. And I saw my favorite person there, Kitty, um, at G Street. So if you're ever there, just ask for Kitty if she's available. She's the best. <laughs> so I got to like catch up with her and it, it was just awesome. So that was fantastic. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about, about these things. Oh, for old for old times sakes, let's do a quick thrifty Thursday. Okay, it's not going to be quick, but we're going to do it anyways. So I got a $1.99 bundle. Let me tell you, when I saw what was in here potentially, I knew I needed to have it. So all of the goodies, I, I had picked this up in another bundle as well from a thrift fine so this is really cool that I got more of it so it's this like prim um these snaps which are like the brass snaps um for like jean jackets and things but that's really cool then I got oh my gosh I just saw and I don't know the name of the person I can't remember someone was just showing 
hook and eye closures, adjustable closures. And you, can you appreciate what this means? You can put a hook and eye on like a pair of pants, but they have the grooves in them. So if you expand a little bit, you can like change, like move it. What? Mm. Listen, look at how large this hook and eye closure is. You put that on pant skirts and such. Then you got these buttons. Then I have a few of my self-covered buttons, which I'm actually now a little bit more comfortable with. So I'm excited to have these so I can use them. Then I had adjustable suspender clips. Don't mind if I do. Look at these gorgeous gold buttons. They're like gumdrop buttons on a white blouse. And then, like a button maker kit, but, you know, I'm missing some of my buttons, but that's okay. And then some more snaps and closures. So, I mean, my, my, my just assortment of snaps and closures is expanding, ever expanding. I have all different sizes of snaps and closures and, and, and colorways and such. More hooks and eyes, other smaller hook and eyes. But really, okay, really the showstoppers here, as we all have come to know, are these. Like, look, look at this in one, in one container for $1.99? That was a glorious day that day that I went and I found this. And I have been waiting to share it with you for like weeks. But the thrift find that changed the game and this like this must have been like um, over a month ago when i discovered this because october i was nowhere to be found i was not going to anyone's thrift store so this must have been like end of september it has come from the dry cleaners friends because i did a massive boo-boo i went and i discovered in the thrift store the most glorious table cover that I have ever seen. The intricacy of the lace detail in this piece is breathtaking. I will insert clips of how much I paid for this beauty and its initial condition. Now, as you know, when you set certain rules, you just gotta stick with them because with routine and practices comes consistency and dependability. And what I have come to depend on, my friends, is pre-washing my fabrics. Closer to the time that they come into my house than the time that I actually use them to ensure that when I am ready to start sewing, my friends, so are the fabrics, they are ready to be sewn. So, with that in mind, I pop this beautiful lace cotton tablecloth in the washer machine. I doubt that I changed the setting to be s cold because I usually keep it in the middle temperature. You know, I want both waterways to be coming in so that it fills up faster. You know, I put that thing in the washer machine. When it came out, I did a silent cry because I couldn't let anyone in my house know that I felt that sort of emotional attachment to cloth. People in my household would not understand, okay? So I had to keep it on the inside, but I was slowly crying. Oh, I think I took photos of what it came out like. I was distraught. The amount of wrinkles, I was like, how didn't I process? How didn't I think of that? Why didn't I imagine that this could happen? But I will say, honestly, I'm so thankful that I did it because I can only imagine my sheer frustration if that would have happened after I put in hours of work making it into a garment, which then might have made the fabric even harder to get back into any sort of flat state. So in all honesty, it was for the better because now I know this is a dry clean only garment once it is sewn up. But when I tell you this thing was worth the $10 I paid to have it dry cleaned, I could, they asked me when I took it, Zips is 
$2.99 for any garment, but my friends, if you ever take a household item, hold your breath. They charged me $10 <laughs> to dry clean this, and it took everything out of me to not say, oh, that's a scarf. That is a scarf. It's just, a, it's a big scarf, but it's a scarf. But I didn't do it. I said yes. I believe that is a tablecloth. And they charged me $10. It's like double what I, triple probably what I, what I paid for the actual, we're not going to get into it. So listen, look at how impressive, how beautiful, how delicate. Do you, do you see? Is this even the right side? Do you see this? Do you see the texture? Do you see that raised? Wow. This thing, like the fact that my eye even caught it on the rack when I was, I, I was, <laughs> I held on to it like someone was going to catch me and tell me to put it back because it was an artifact. It's so glorious. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but Zimmerman, that's all I could think. When I think about what makes some of these high-end pieces look so incredible, sometimes it's simply the fabrication. They have the simplest silhouettes. And it's the fabrication and what they're using and the materials that sometimes as like home sewers, we just can't get our hands on. But when I saw this, and the lace detailing and the cutouts and all of the... Do you, do you see it? Do you see how the edges are fit? And of course, I look at, look at my, my struggle. Look at how intricate this is. I was smitten. I was bitten by it and I was smitten. I am so... Like, look at how that corner is finished off. Man. Um, talk about possibilities. Talk about... This is going to have to hang itself up for a second just for me to come to because the thing that I produce, the thing that I work on, the thing that I make with this, one, must be lined, but also has to be able to, you know, allow the fabric to speak and to shine. And I have to work with, of course, the limits of the fabric that I have here. But when I say do not sleep on the linen section at your local thrift store, just take your time. Mosey on in. On this particular day, this was the only thing I walked out of there with. And a new watch, which I need to go and get batteries put in, but it was worth it. Look at, I'm just so happy. Anyways, okay. You can tell it's been a while. I've missed showing up and talking to you about all things craft, creativity, inspiration, and it just feels so good to be back. I cannot wait. I have so much more else that I can do. Like, I went to Joanne this weekend. Oh, G Street Fabric is also having their Veterans Day sale over this weekend so I'm gonna put in the description box down below if you're in the DC Maryland Virginia area need a reason to go to one of my favorite <laughs> fabric stores I'm gonna put that link in the description box but go tell them I said hi anyway I went to um, this weekend is also a simplicity sale by the way, I had McCall's patterns that are on my wish list. I actually was in Joann's last week during the weekend days on Thursday, I believe. And legitimately, they did not put up the signs that they usually put up that say like McCall's $1.99. They didn't have it. And I didn't look in the paper. I had no business being in there is what I told myself. And I said, good for you. They are not having a sale leave so I did and then this weekend I went to go and look at the weekly ad and saw that last week was supposed to be a McCall sale hold the phone <laughs> tell the press why didn't they have the sign up why didn't I ask somebody 
I don't know. Anyway, um, I know we're getting into the holiday season, so I'm going to be more vigilant. And truly, do I need those patterns? No. They would have been nice to have them. Somebody could have told me. That's all I'm saying. But this week, it was a simplicity pattern sale, and I picked up four patterns. One of which I think I might be returning or trading in for something else. But I got this one because it is a wide leg pant. I like view C and D. I like that view D has that waistband. View, view C has facings. I just think it could be really cool. I was trying to look on Instagram to see examples and I think we could get down with this. Then I picked up this pattern. Now the reason why I got it is because I was looking for a pattern that has a puffy sleeve like a satin sleeve with a puff at the shoulder. Now that I have uploaded all of my uh, patterns to Trello I can easily flick through. So I was doing my inventory like this was sought after. I was looking through to see if I have another puff sleeve pattern piece that I could borrow for dresses that I want to make. And the answer was aside from my S8875, which I've touted, that I love, that is the only one. But sometimes I feel that the, that the, that the cap on that sleeve just sits up a bit too high for me. I want something that gathers but doesn't like sit up like this. You know, I didn't, you know, um, so I love that pattern. I still do, but I wanted something a little bit different with the gather. And that happened to be of all of my, I, I mean, I have a, this much patterns. That was the only pattern with a set in sleeve with gathers at the cap. What? So anyways, I found this in the catalog and view A and B, as you can see, have a really nice gather there. Um, so looks really romantic. I can see myself making that. Then we have S8655. Now I got this for this view right there. The, um, like peg leg style view B. I want that because I have some, some stretch rovens, like a velveteen and a stretch, um, like faux leather. That would be so good. And like a really nice sleek leg pant and that's what I want to make then I got this because I was thinking this top in the faux leather that I just showed you here this like more structured one would be nice but who am I kidding I'm not gonna wear something that cropped and then it short sleeve then I was like then you're gonna have to find something to layer under it give it up Fadmata anyways so that's why I think that one might be going back my battery is about to die so I'm gonna say goodbye but it is so good to be back I can't wait to see you all soon and share some more things, hopefully some more makes. Let me know what you're working on down below and how do you feel like the Zadie jumpsuit turned out? I would love to know. If you are coming back from a break or about to go into hibernation after doing some sewing, listen, it is normal. Get your rest and do whatever fuels you in the moment. And sometimes it might not be sewing and that is okay and I had to learn that over my little break but feels really good to have the sojo running again love 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 being back have a wonderful day you all bye bye